Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. So let's get started and look into the first article. The first article of discussion is about Public Safety Act. What is the context? Former Chief Minister and National Conference Vice President Omar Abdullah promised to repeal the controversial Public Safety Act if his party comes to power in Jammu and Kashmir. Let's not focus on the political aspect but look at the administrative framework of what this Public Safety Act is all about. Let's get back to the background. Back in 1970s, timber smuggling was a major issue in Jammu and Kashmir. This was a major loss to the government as the government was losing on its revenue front. In order to overcome this issue, take action against the timber mafia, Sheikh Abdullah government came up with a tough measure in the state by introducing this act that is Public Safety Act of 1978. With time, this was also used to control militancy related incidents. So any individual who can pose a threat to the life security and property can be detained by the Jammu and Kashmir government without any trial for a period of about three to six months. The next question is who passes orders under the act and on what basis? The detention order under the Public Safety Act is issued by the district magistrate after police recommendation. So the police prepare a case file, they prepare a dossier against the accused and submit it to the deputy commissioner detailing why a person should be detained under this particular act. So they'll give all the case studies, reason out why this person or the accused has to be put behind bars and this will be read by the district magistrate. So in case the district magistrate feels that there is merit in the case and this person could be a threat to life, security and public disorder, then it will be a yes from district magistrate, he'll be put behind bars. The district magistrate feels that it is a no and the accused has to be released immediately, then the police commissioner or the police officials will have to listen to it and immediately release the accused. So it is the discretionary power that is given to the deputy commissioner to accept or reject that recommendation and accordingly pass an order for detention under the Public Safety Act. In most of the cases what usually happens is the district magistrate usually pass the detention order without even questioning the police. So what we have to understand is that this particular Public Safety Act has come up with certain statistical evidence for the same. So what are the statistical evidence? According to 2010 Amnesty report, a lawless law detentions under the Public Safety Act was seen. At least 10,000 to 20,000 people have been detained under this preventive detention law since it was enacted in 1970. There have been 1000 detentions between March 2016 and August 2017 under the Jammu and Kashmir Public Safety Act of 1978. Hurriyat leader Masrat Alam has been booked under the PSA for 17 consecutive times. So what this reveals is that there are certain concerns within this Public Safety Act. So let's try and understand what are these concerns. The first important point that we have to understand here is that political opponents are silent. Over the past three and a half decades, the government has frequently used this act against the political opponents. So there are people of a particular political party or a political section or organized group in case these are the organized group voicing their opinion against the ideology of the government in power, against the government, then these set of organizations or political opponents are immediately silenced. Why? Because their voices are silenced and put behind bars. Next key concern is undue delay. So what do we mean by it? Many in the rural areas are uncertain about the legal process. So they do not know how to go about the readdressal when a particular person is arrested and put behind bars in the Public Safety Act. And what do they do? Instead of approaching the courts, they approach a political person, let's say the MLA. So he approaches the MLA and in order to get these appointments, convince the case of the family member and provide new evidences to these MLA as well as the political person, it takes undue delay. On one side, they do not know how the legal system works. On the other side, they'll have to get the appointments of the MLA to convince them, provide them evidence and this particular process takes a long duration. So this undue delay is also been another concern while people and their family members are put behind bars. Next concern this article goes on to speak about 
about is in terms of understand confuse we did understand that there are people who do not understand how the legal process works but there are also people who know how the legal process works and for all the legal evidences legal proceedings to happen they'll have to go to the high court or the relevant court let's say the high court of srinagar majority of these areas that we see in srinagar are most of the times in unrest or confuse is enforced in this particular area so even if people want to continue with their legal proceedings there are practical difficulties like unrest where buses do not travel to that area and curfew is imposed in this area as a result they are still not able to make sure that their family member or friends are returning from the prisons next important point is young children are arrested originally when we look into this particular law any person above the age of 16 years can be arrested but there were certain changes and amendments that were made and this amendment and the current change puts it at about 18 years young children as age of about 12 years are also arrested and how do the police arrest these people one is just because they see a particular hairstyle they see a particular beardo style or they feel that there is a person who has a tattoo and they sense that this person can be a security threat the police on arbitrary basis are arresting people and putting behind bars so the police have no substantial evidence the police have no statistics whatsoever but just because because they feel they sense that this person could be a problem with no evidence whatsoever they are putting such young people at the age of 12 behind bars it allows all these police people to continue with their shoddy work repeating this particular work time after time and getting away from this particular public safety act another key concern is there is no common structure for approval so initially when we discussed as to who will be providing these permission we discussed that it is the district magistrate this act is enforced in number of areas so you have district magistrates in different districts so law is in such a way that it gives arbitrary power to the district magistrate to accept this particular proposal by the police commissioner so what this means is the law which should have given skeletal structure and the framework was supposed to be given to the district magistrate it in within these boundaries within these contours that the district magistrate has to give permission but what happens is there is no common structure that has been laid under this public safety act so because there is no structure that has been laid whatever the police commissioner or the police officials go on to propose to these district magistrates they are accepting these proposals and the people are just put behind bars so these are the various concerns that have been voiced in the public safety act but with time because of all these concerns the human rights activists voicing their concern political organization raising their voices there have been certain then commitments that have been made in the year 2011 so originally when you look into this particular architecture or this particular law what was happening was a particular person in the name of public order could be arrested for an year or a duration of one year and this has been currently reduced to about 3 months and in the name of security any person could be pushed behind bars for a period of about 2 years and this has been reduced to about 6 months right now however the most important point is there is still the provision for revision and the detention period can be extended to 1 year and 2 years respectively so what is the conclusion what is that we can draw from this situation the state has been using this public safety act arbitrarily and arresting anyone it views as dangerous. dangerous so it is very absurd and vague and disastrous for the state to be using this and when all allegations are made with no statistical evidence that is being provided instead of using some institutional procedures that are already laid in the law instead of using the human rights safeguards of ordinary criminal justice system the law is used loosely against the political activists members of the political groups young people and descendants against whom there would be insufficient evidence so what is that we can draw is thousands are languishing in jail even for those that are released the possibility of redetention hangs like a sword over their heads this erodes the credibility and belief in the criminal justice system so this is what we need to understand in reference to this article let's look into the next article the next article says iaf chief flags delay in manufacture of equipment indian air force plays a key role 
to keep the Indian aerospace resistant to the attacks and manage the aerial warfare during the conflict. Its motto is Nabha Sparsham Deeptam which is taken from Bhagavad Gita which means touch the sky with glory. So the air power is a major player in the future conflicts in case there is a possible threat that is emanating from the other countries. However, what we have to understand here is that there has been certain concerns that have been voiced by the air chief marshal. The Indian Air Chief Marshal has voiced his apprehensions about the domestic development of defense equipment due to its undue delay in the delivery. So what we have to understand here is there is constant need for manufacturing and upgradation to meet the demands of the current day Air Force. But development of these equipments indigenously has taken incredibly long time and because of this the armament and technology has gone obsolete. And what are we speaking about? this is in reference to the Tejas. So what happens is the Indian Air Force has come up with technology upgradation. It has suggested the same to the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. So by the time this particular technology is implemented and delivered to the Air Force, the technology would have already become obsolete. So what this article goes on to say is by the time the Indian Air Force has given a particular technology upgradation and by the time it is delivered to the Indian Air Force, the technology in itself has become absolute. So what it has gone on to recommend is during this process of transition where you are implementing a particular program and this program has not been delivered to the Indian Air Force, there is a dearth in the squadron strength. So in order to overcome this issue, what we need is purchases of new aircraft that needs to be accommodated from other countries. So what it has gone on to say is that we, the India and the Indian Air Force are ready to comply by the Indian growth. We are ready to comply by those equipments that are manufactured by the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. We are completely happy with this particular progress of indigenization. However, when there is a possible threat that is emanating from our neighbors, our neighbors would not know whether we have the squadron strength or not. So what we request you, the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited is kindly make sure that this process does not cause undue delay because the enemy does not know whether we have the air crafts or not. So kindly buckle up and make sure that this indigenized process or indigenized development is fast and delivery of equipments happens on a faster pace. So this is what we need to understand in reference to this article. So moving on, let's look into the next article. So the next article says heading towards strategic instability. So let's try and understand what this issue is all about. There is a revolution in the military affairs and this has attracted the attention of strategic analysts and policy planners who are studying in detail about the defense segment in and around the world. So what these planners are currently doing is their foreign focus is on military thinking across the world and this is because there is a constant moving away from the traditional military hardware structure which involves large number of soldiers to high-end technologies. So what do we mean by it? What does this mean is because the number of soldiers who are employed in the traditional system will be completely reduced. The casualties because of employing these soldiers will be completely controlled and what we will have is the replacement of the human power by high-end technologies. So what are the high-end technologies that we are speaking about? Currently when we look into the high-end technologies what we have is the artificial intelligence. Big data analytics, satellite jammers, hypersonic strike technology, advanced cyber capabilities as well as spectrum denial and high energy layers. So this article goes on to speak about the mode of operation from the traditional system of employing these type of people that is human centric to the new type of technology orientation. So as a result of this upgradation, the government needs to come up with suitable adaptations as well. One such move that the government Government of India has also taken comes up way back in the 2018 where the government decided to set up three new agencies. So what are the three new agencies that we are speaking about? One, the Defense Cyber Agency, then you have the Defense Space Agency and then the Special Operations Division. First, let us try to understand what the Cyber Agency is all about. Armed forces in itself are alive to cyber threats which are emanating from multiple countries. These armed forces are still not immune from the cyber threats. In order to overcome this issue, the Government of India in 2018 
2018 came up with this particular agency called as the defense cyber agency so the facility once operational will pull in all resources from different sectors so you have the army you have the navy and you also have the air force so the personnel from army navy and air force will be coming up together and they will be part of this agency called as a cyber agency where they will be able to address all the threats in the cyber domain this will be the first ever dedicated cyber wing in the army which will have people from about 200 to about 1000 people so all these three people from three different platforms to come together and these come together and form an agency and this agency will make sure that there is no threat to the military so this will come under the command of chairman chief of staff committee and work closely with the national cyber security advisor to start off how this agency will work with there will be a different cyber agency that will be based in the ids so what does ids stands for it stands for the integrated defense staff and it is in this particular place we will have the headquarters initially and later dedicated units will also come up within the other army commands the next agency that this particular architecture of the government has come up with is the defense space agency what is the importance of this defense space agency china for that matter as we all know is one of those countries which is fighting out with united states of america in technological upgradation china has also demonstrated its offensive capabilities in the space what we are doing is we are utilizing the space in the healthy development using it for communication satellite development and so on this is for the developmental process but on the other side india is lacking behind in the offensive forces however what we see is china and usa have breached all this and they are also implementing the offensive capabilities one such example is in the form of dn3 so there was one of the missiles called as the dn3 this is a long range missile interceptor which is called as dn3 which has been able to accomplish this offensive process in the space agency so we have china doing all this and there is also united states of america increased its presence in this particular area so china is the second country after the united states of america to have demonstrated this capability so in order to make sure that india also has an offensive capability like china as well as the united states of america the space agency is what will deliver the goods for us so it will have a constant coordination with the indian space research organization as well as the drdo currently we are looking only at the developmental purposes we do not have any offensive purposes but because china has because usa has and there could be a possible threat to our developmental projects in the future india also needs a space agency and this space agency is what will deliver the goods to us and this will have close coordination with isro as well as the drdo the next important tool is the special operations division so so this special operations division will have commandos from the indian army indian navy as well as the indian air force what happens currently is these different organizations that is the army have something called as the para commandos the navy has something like the marine commandos and the air force has something like the garuda commandos these are the special forces these three special forces act in silos they have independent organization they practice independently but they do not work together what happens with the special operations divisions is it gets together all these special forces train together to deal with various exigencies that could be a potential threat in the future so currently they are organizing in silos they are working independently they do not have any set of coordination but this will be bridged right now by making sure there is an agency called a special operations divisions where all these special forces come up together and work together in form of synergy so these three agencies that india has come up with in order to make sure that india is not lagging behind in the high end technology however what we have to understand is because of all these that india is coming up and majority of the other countries are coming up these type of agencies that are being developed in india as well as the other countries could be a potential threat and this can disturb the tranquility 
so what this article goes on to say is that the technological upgradation the increase in the high end technology and all these upgradations that we currently see can disturb the peace and tranquility and also the stability that we currently see in the environment so let's try and understand what are the concerns that have been voiced in this article so the first thing it speaks about is it says that strategic stability is itself questioned what is this strategic stability what we have to understand here is there is this nuclear missile country so this nuclear missile itself when a country is owning it acts as a deterrent let's take the example of india and pakistan india does not go on to war with pakistan because pakistan has nuclear missiles and this is acting as a deterrent pakistan does not come on war to india the primary reason is because india has a large nuclear missiles and it can be a threat to pakistan so this nuclear presence nuclear missiles in a country could act as a deterrent and that is the strategic stability is all about so what the strategic stability basically means is it is a state of affairs it is a way how a state conducts its affairs in which countries that is the neighboring countries are confident that their adversaries would not be able to undermine their nuclear deterrent capability currently because of new set of organizations new set of high end technologies this strategic stability is itself questionable how the major reason how countries are able to have peace and tranquility is in the form of deterrence but currently due to high end technologies what we will have is these hypersonic glide vehicles will eventually re place this conventional delivery systems there'll be real time tracking and surveillance may take major strides and artificial intelligence tools will also be used surveillability of nuclear arsenal can also be taken so this whole idea of deterrence in itself can be dismantled and destroyed due to advanced artificial intelligence as well as the other tools of technology so this strategic stability which is acting as a deterrent right now will not be used in the future because of the artificial intelligence tool which itself will destroy those type of arsenal and those type of missiles is what is being discussed in this article next important point that this article goes on to speak about is in terms of the strategic competition so what the strategic competition basically means is you have number of countries currently let's take the example of united states of america so it is withdrawing from the intermediate range nuclear forces treaty so because it is withdrawing what they are doing is they are breaking away from the treaty which was once making sure that there was reduction in the nuclear arms race but with united states of america withdrawing from the treaty china is waiting for an opportunity russia is waiting for an opportunity to make sure that they can improve wise on their existing nuclear missiles so this strategic competition which was inhibited back then with the signing of treaties will be enhanced right now because majority of the countries are withdrawing themselves and because of this withdrawing there will be competition between countries and there will be potential arms race in the offing between the superpowers as well as the other countries and the third thing that we also have to understand is technology implications are not fully understood yet what do we mean by it? let's say for example there are high end technologies artificial intelligence tools that are implemented so these technologies that are implemented are unlike the human control when it comes to the human control these are the ones where delivery happens with the human presence so the humans are able to control the mechanism but with artificial intelligence tools where they are programmed algorithms are related for them there is no control of it where there is no human presence and because of it the technological implications the casualties will not be able to be predicted so technology implications are not fully understood because of this particular program another important point that this article goes on to speak about is in terms of the cascading effects so what do we mean by cascading effects let's take for a example china china is one such country which has improvised in its technology so the china is directly competing with the united states of america so it has its own set of offensive tools it has its own set of jet aircraft military equipments as well as nuclear missiles and it has recently also come up with certain offensive space programs as well so because china is directly fighting out with united states of america for global supremacy what this will also lead us that india will also build up so 
obtain ammunition as well why because china is not fighting out with india but with united states of america but this can also be a threat to india sometime when there is a conflict it can be also imposed on india so what is india doing india is also waiting for its chance and india will also develop new set of identities new set of equipments and new set of offensive capable defense protocols so what india is doing is just because china is coming up with these set of tools india is also competing not in the magnitude with respect to china and usa but at least with whatever capability that it has now because india has developed its own offensive tools what this will lead to is pakistan developing its tools why because pakistan now senses that india is developing these type of tools and it can be a threat to pakistan so what pakistan will right now do is it will come up with its own set of offensive set of tools so one country building up these set of offensive technologies will make sure that other set of countries are also matching up so there is one country a it connects with country b and then you have country c which is also developing these type of missiles and this is what is called as cascading effect so what we have to understand here is the traditional way of military which employed the people has been moved away and what we have is a technological upgradation and because of this technological upgradation the strategic stability is questioned strategic competition is questioned technology implications are not understood and this will have a cascading effect so what this article currently goes on to do is that government which has come up with this particular idea of defense cyber agency space agency and and special provisions division will have to have a relook why because this can have a cascading effects now pakistan can start developing its own set of tools and offensive mechanism so in order to make sure that this is not being done the government will have to revisit is what this article all about so what has it said is that there are inherent flaws in this particular agency itself the diff defense space agency will be taken care by the air force the cyber agency will be taken care by the navy the special operations division will be taken care by the army so what you have is individual departments ideally you should have had synergy but again there are these agencies taken care by different institutions so synergy is missing in itself this is another point it makes another point is these type of organizations again come under the cloud of the civilian government civilian bureaucracy ultimately even if the bureaucracy of the defense makes certain decisions but it is the civil services which dominates it and it is what takes the decision so ultimately whatever recent moves that the government has come up with will have to have a relook even if the government is coming up with this particular protocol a synergy is required and the defense will have to take a call rather than the civilian bureaucracy is what this article all about so this is what we need to understand in reference to this article so let's look into the next article so the next article says giant cavity in antarctic glacier signals rapid dk so what is that we are speaking about we are speaking about the towards glacier which could be a potential question from your prelims examination so what is the context a gigantic cavity which is about 1000 feet tall is growing in the bottom of this towards glacier and this is part of the western antarctica so there will be a question in your prelims which will ask you where is this towards glacier kindly remember this is in western africa and it has been reported that there was one of the study that was conducted by the nasa scientists where they go on to say that this glacier is currently disintegrating and because of this disintegration of the glacier what we will see is rapid decay of the ice sheet and acceleration in global sea levels due to the climate change so this particular cavity which is accelerating its global sea levels due to climate change was revealed by ice penetrating radar in nasa's operation ice bridge so apart from the radar that has been used by nasa there have been other set of data that was collected by the italian as well as the german radars as well so what we have to understand here is how did the scientists measure the ice loss when it comes to this particular glacier currently there is no single protocol or no way to monitor the antarctic glaciers at the ground level so we won't be able to go up to this particular ground level because of its coldness because of the abrupt air that is there within this region
condition so they are not able to go up there physically and measure the ice loss but instead what the scientists have currently used is this particular radar in the form of operation ice bridge so what happens is when there is constant glacial melting that happens there is movement of the ice there is movement of the water so because of the movement of the ice and water and surface height of the ice the scientists were able to come to a conclusion that there is rapid increase in the ice sheet melting and this has been caused due to the constant climate change so this is what we need to understand in reference to this article so let's look into the next article these two editorials are again very important this is dealing with the nrc as well as the citizenship bill this we have discussed n number of times and apart from this the 10 percent bill that the government has come up with is all this article all about and we have discussed this once again in our earlier cns as well so moving on let's look into some of the prelims practice question it says consider the following about gsat 31 it will provide services from geostationary orbit in ku band it will be responsible for delivery of high quality television telecommunication and broadcasting services which of the above statements are correct and the answer for this is both let's look into the explanation so this was with respect to current affairs today so the indian space research organization will get its new communication satellite so gsat 31 is a communication satellite that will be launched from the french guyana on a higher european rocket so this gsat 31 which is weighing 2500 kg will replace the insat 4cr this insat 4cr with 12 ku band transponders was put to orbit in september 2007 to drive what was then a new dth industry so this is what an explanation for that particular question moving on let's look into map based question the sargasso sea is present in which of these oceans or seas it is Atlantic Ocean. Let's look into the map for the same. So you have the Sargasso Sea which is very close to the Gulf of Mexico and this is in the Atlantic Ocean. Moving on, let's look into the next prelims question that is the previous year question paper. Which one of the following is a very significant aspect of the Champaran Satyagraha? And the answer for this is joining of peasant unrest to India's national movement. Let's look into the main space question. It says, should the forward classes be provided with reservation? Critically comment. We have discussed this in our CNA in our earlier classes as well. So kindly write all your answers on the comment section so that we can have a peer review and the Baiju's team can also evaluate as well. So in case you have liked our initiative, Please do encourage us by liking our videos and commenting on our comment section. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.